why didn't I spring for an extra $200 and buy a Glock? Oh no! What is up you sexy YouTube mother lovers? This is a 762 by 39 caliber cartridge. This is a caliber that is most commonly chambered in the legendary AK-47 series of rifles. It's also the workhorse that gives the AK platform its legendary knockdown power from its muzzle energy for an intermediate cartridge. So what would happen if you took a hard hitting rifle round like this, normally shot out of a 16 inch barrel, and put it into a pocket pistol? A bad idea. That is what you would get. You would get a bad idea. This is the Heiser Pack 1 or Pocket AK-1. It is a Derringer single shot chambered in 762 by 39 and today, frankly, I just hope it doesn't explode. Light strike. Great way to start it out. Look who finally felt like going off. This is barely a functional firearm. I don't know what you expected out of this montage. And it doesn't really unlock either. Cut. So the only surefire way we have found to actually be able uh, to unlock this thing is just beating it open. There we go. It usually doesn't go on the first one. That's neat. Beating this open, and uh, you still have, of course, your spring loaded extractor doesn't work, so you have to jam a cleaning rod. So, yeah. And then, then it almost kind of works. Uh, go ahead and subscribe for more field gunsmithing tips like this. So, yeah, this is the Pack 1 or the Pocket AK 1. This is probably the worst legally firearm we've ever showed off on the channel. We have not even gotten into what makes this just a, just a piece of shit. But before we do that, let's go ahead and talk about something real quick that's not a piece of shit. Kamikoto knives. Can you believe they trusted me with these? These Kamikoto knives are uh, the, I'll, I can only describe them as intimidatingly sharp. I'm legit a little afraid to own these, you know, out of all the guns that I have. I know those won't do anything, but uh, these right here, I don't trust myself with this. Honestly, these make the perfect gift for either yourself or one of those weird knife guys in your family that are super into this shit. God, that's fucking crazy. Fuck, dude. This is honestly a pretty rad sponsor segment, so if you want to check these things out, maybe as a gift or, you know, just a gift to you because you deserve it. I feel like this is a threat. But Kamikoto is offering an extra $50 off if you use the code Brandon or go to kamikoto.com slash Brandon. going to go ahead and leave the links down in the description and the pinned comment for that. And I am going to put these down before I cut myself an accident. So the beginning of this video, Brandon, you said you hope this thing doesn't explode. Why did you say that? Well, when I first went out to fire this thing, just to kind of test it out, see how ridiculous it would be, uh, it locked up like you just saw in the beginning of the video. So that got me thinking. So I got back to the shop and I tried a set of Go No-Go gauges. If you're not familiar with these, these are just gauges that, uh, that you use in gunsmithing to check your headspace. It's a way of measuring lockup on a firearm and basically just how deep your chamber's drilled and everything. Make sure everything's kosher and that uh, you're not gonna have a case head separation or blow up your gun. This is a set of 7.62x39 Go No-Go gauges. I've got a Go gauge here. I've got a No-Go gauge in the pocket. Every serious AK owner should have a set of these. So a go gauge is there to make sure that you've got enough clearance to uh, have proper lockup. So it should go on a go gauge. You know, green means go. So cool, goes on a go gauge. This is a no-go gauge. This has red on it, because it's not supposed to go. This makes sure you don't have too much clearance and possibly risking blowing up your firearm. That's not awesome. Seriously, I I've seen guns that swallow a no-go gauge before, but this thing gives this thing the Gluck Gluck 9000. This should not close. This, this is there to let you know that there's a problem with your headspace. So the difference between a go gauge and a no-go gauge is about eight thousandths of an inch. Now I don't have a field gauge, but that's another eight thousandths, and a field gauge is basically just telling you this gun is not safe to shoot at all. So I don't have a field gauge, that's an extra eight thou, but I do have a shim for ten thousandths of an inch. So let's put that back there. And uh, we, we got a little bit of a problem here. I bought this gun brand new like a month ago. So this came brand new from the fucking factory 
ready to blow up in my hand. But let's be honest, that's never stopped me before, so let's keep going. I mean, come on, the lockup's just right there above where my finger is gonna be. It's not like uh, my finger, my index finger that I, I make a living with is stuck in this little metal guillotine right below an exploding chamber. It's the worst that could happen. So now that we've established that this handgun is basically a hand grenade, let's talk about how bad this would be to actually use in a defensive situation. Completely ignoring for now, you've got like basically no muzzle energy out of this, even though you've got a rifle round. Uh, <laughs> the cartridge takes up about half of the barrel length and the other half is vented here uh, to be like an integral muzzle brake. So God knows how much muzzle energy you actually have in this thing. Let's see, aside from being a uh, defensive weapon that you only have one shot in and you saw how easy it is to break it open once you shoot it, uh, let's try to hit steel here at self-defense distance, I'd say. So this is where we run into another big problem on the Heiser uh, Pack 1, is that you have a ridiculously heavy trigger pull. I'm going to go ahead and unload it real quick. Uh, show clear. This trigger is fucking ridiculous. Look at my handshake. Trying to pull, like, trying to pull this trigger, it's fucking, it's terrible and all that trigger weight, and we still get light strikes out of this thing. So let's see, let's see what we can do in this target. So uh, <clears throat> I'm in a self-defense situation. That's my person, I don't know you. Oh, light strike. So uh, that's anticlimactic. Hopefully your life wasn't on the line. Twice. There we go. Ah, oh, shit, he's got a friend. <clears throat> Don't worry, honey, I'm coming. Ugh. If I could just, oh, why didn't I spring for an extra $200 and buy a Glock? Oh no. Yeah, this is fucking garbage. This is completely unusable. Another neat feature is this little storage compartment right here in the handle of the, uh, the pistol itself, which is traditionally used in a Derringer to store extra rounds of ammunition, as you only have, of course, the one, or on the double barrel, the two in the pipe. So uh, storing ammo in the handle it's actually a pretty practical, uh, practical little application for it. The only problem is, on this gun in particular, there's absolutely no orientation in which you can fit a 7.62 by 39 cartridge in the handle of the gun, making this completely useless. I don't know, maybe it's a, you use it as a Skittle container, I don't fucking know. So Brandon, this is called the Pocket AK. So what, what is this, what makes this an AK other than being chambered in 7.62 by 39? Nothing. Fucking nothing. This is a this is a gimmicky little derringer. This is not. This isn't an AK. This, I, I hate it. Okay, so let's talk about muzzle velocity and muzzle energy. This is you. This is the guy she told you not to worry about. This is uh, my Type One AK, and this is what we're going to use to demonstrate uh, typical velocity out of a 7.62 by 39 from a 16-inch barrel. I forget what the Heiser technically is. I think it's like a four inch barrel with like two of that being cartridge. And at least another inch and a half of this up front is vented uh, on both sides up here is kind of like an integral break. So you're not exactly getting uh, optimal pressure out of that. So to compare the two in a very scientific way, we're gonna shoot both at a 12 pack of caffeine free squirt thirst quencher. The official sponsor of Holiday Cheers. This is what 762 by 39 out of a 16 and a half inch barrel does to a 12 pack of squirt. Shooting squirt, which we all know is actually just P in three, two, one. Gnarly. Trying the same thing in the same ammo we used in the T1, except out of this little thingy. So, uh, see how she does. Testing if it really is not about the size of the wave in three, two, one. Hey, it actually fucking fired that time. Still gonna have to beat it open though. Yep, did a pretty solid number on this one still, uh, but as you can see, as far as the raw energy, uh, was nowhere near the same. Shooting with the full 16 inch barrel was a lot more explosive in energy, whereas this one was just kind of a, a hole puncher. Uh, and I'm pretty sure wherever that bullet went, it did not have a whole lot of energy left over. Was that 16 inch barrel? That bullet just kept on going. Well, let me propose something that's a little weird for the channel, okay? What if we approach this a little bit more, bear with me, 
scientifically. So this here is what is referred to as a chrono or a chronograph. The purpose of this instrument is to find out the velocity of a projectile. Now there's a ton of data available about uh, you know the speeds of uh, different ammo types through a 16 inch barrel all the way down to like a 10 inch barrel for, for 7.62 by 39 but there's really no data for a vented 4 inch barrel. As a man of science myself we're gonna fix that. So what this instrument does is it's gonna determine when something passes through this first little loop and when something passes through the second and the time it takes from it to get from point A to point B does the math and figures out how fast that projectile would need to be moving. Three, two, one. Dead nuts on at 2300 feet per second, which is roughly where it should be, so that's perfect. Let's just know we're at least in the ballpark. Now let's try this little fucking pocket pistol. Let's test this out. Go ahead and pause the video. Let me know your predictions down in the comments, because I'm curious. I, I have my own predictions, but I'm not going to tell them to you because you guys are just going to roast me uh, whichever direction I'm wrong in. So let's see what happens. Firing in three, two, one. Hey, it actually fired. That's cool. Ah, still one unlocked, whatever. 1,236 feet per second. I'm actually kind of surprised it's that fast. I almost didn't expect it to break the sound barrier. So at 1,200 feet per second, you've taken the 7.62 by 39 and nerfed it down to something that is roughly the same velocity as nine millimeter. And you have better have hit what you were aiming for. Now it's not even fucking useful for that. So if any of you out there were uh, considering this as a even remotely practical self-defense option, hopefully I have dissuaded you of that notion because this is fucking just dog shit. There you go, that works. Anyway, <laughs> I think that's, uh, that's about all we can do on that little uh, that little piece right there. Uh, 300 bucks well spent. Huh. If you have any other weird shit or just cool guns that you'd like to see us play around with out here on the range, please let me know down in the comments. Be sure you're part of that hashtag AKG notification squad commenting here in the first hour and be sure you're still subscribed because YouTube's doing that weird unsubscribing people who follow the channel kind of bullshit again. Anyhow, guys, I appreciate you staying till the end of the video, and as always, I will see you sexy YouTube mother lovers next time around. I should probably go get that, because that's a log firearm. God knows how much money, uh, how much, fuck, god damn it. How much money, how much fuck. Make sure you join that hashtag AKG notification squad commenting in the first hour. Be sure you're so... Fuck! God damn, fuck. All right.